All right, second video of the day. Um, this one is gonna be what if Deku was in the Inazuka clan. Just as a disclaimer, I'm too lazy to figure out a name for a dog. So it's just gonna be Akamaru because I can't think of anything else. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. Um, so um, soon I'll be posting um, what if Deku was a ghoul. Um, that one will be ready soon. And, um, yeah, alright, let's get into this. So, in this one, Deku's mom is going to be the number three pro hero. The number three hero in, 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 um, uh, you know, Japan. So, he's, Deku's born with frizzy black hair and sharper canine teeth and an amazing sense of smell. So his mom is a pro hero with her two dogs and is very well known and is number two in the popularity scale because how because her dogs and everything and people love her and the dogs. And her daughter was well known for being a very good vet at a young age. So Neku grew up in a decent school and at the age of five his mom came to pick him up and said, Hey Zuku, I have a present for you. Let's go home. Everyone ran up to his mom and her dogs because she was the number three hero. Who wouldn't, right? So, um, they got home to find his sister doing homework. And then he saw a new jacket with fur on the hood covering a box. He saw the box moving and lifted up the sweater. Oh, mommy, you got me a dog? She smiled and Deku hugged him. Arf! You know, that little thing Akamaru does. And the sm the a small bark came from the dog. Since you are part of the Inazuka clan, it's time to train. You know we have a special connection to our dogs, and we have some dog characteristics ourselves. Like our sense of smell and our canines. Now you need to train you using with your dog to fight. Your dog is your partner, and he'll be with you at all times. Deku put Akamaru on, on his head. And then, but... He doesn't know the name is yet. And he's like, what's his name, mommy? And then she smiled and said, Akamaru. And then Akamaru barked again. Arf. Um, Deku smiled. He wore the same kind of red face paint his mom did. And always had fun with, and had fun with Akamaru the rest of the day. Um, I'm not sure if you saw that. Dahi the Nogla notification. But, um, you know, go so Dahi the Nogla because he's Dahi. Um, so he wore the same kind of red face paint as his mom, and he played with Akamaru for the rest of the day. The next day, he wore his new jacket with Akamaru, Akamaru hanging out on his head. A weird-looking boy came up to Deku and started petting Akamaru. Arf! And then the kid says, wow, really? Deku looks at him and says, what? And then the kid says, the doggy said he likes sitting on your head. Deku asks, how do you know that? Can you talk to him? The siding kid nodded his head. The two became friends with each other, and this kid is Koda. Because he's got a dog, animal, and Koda. Boom. Friendship. So they grew up together, becoming really close friends, hanging out in the woods a lot. And Deku even helped Koda get rid of his fear of bugs and stuff like And bugs. Yeah, bugs. I think it was just bugs. Yeah, basically. Um, so they even trained together, becoming stronger um, over time. So um, he even also helped uh, Koda learn how to make his quirk more versatile in certain areas where there aren't that many animals. So Deku was the one with the stronger ability and the better, and he he had the better ability to track people. And people's things. So when someone lost something, he, he if it had their scent, he'd smell. He he'd have Akamaru smell them, and he'd also smell them. And then the two would look for the scent, and um, you know, go around helping people find their stuff. So, um, you know, the two grew up, and um, so when Deku when when Deku's fourteen. After school, since, you know, he's not in the same school as Bakugo, so the same thing doesn't happen. So, um, Deku 
um, became very popular, not only because he helped people, but because the way he, he was able to win many fights that he got into with other people. So on the last day of school, he was walking home to see a fight between a sludge villain and a bunch, and a bunch of heroes. He saw a blonde kid being held hostage and the heroes not doing anything. He looked at, he looked at Akamaru, then took at it, took off his backpack. Be sh re remember, Akamaru's big now, like, you know, where Kiba would ride him and stuff. That's how big um, Akamaru is here. So Deku took off his backpack, yelling, Man, Beast, Clone! And then Akamaru changed into Deku. And then Deku's like, Off-Force Technique. Fang over fang! And the two spun at rapid speeds like drills going through the sludge villain. The two slide on the other side, getting their footing. Nice try, kids, but you failed. The villain laughed and Akamaru went back to normal. Deku put the kid on Akamaru's back. What? When did you? Run, Akamaru! Akamaru left, running, and the kid is unconscious. When Deku got on all fours again, people looked at him. Hey, that kid reminds me of the number three hero. And then she does have a son who was training to be her hero, right? Maybe that's him. Deku then yelled, tunneling fang, spinning again like a drill. And, but do, he it did nothing to the villain. And then, then when he slides back, getting his footing again, he hears a voice yell, Detroit Smash! Deku slides back, looking at All Might. No way, All Might? Deku watches as he stands straight up and laughs. Then, he then whistles for Akamaru. <whistles> you know, I don't, I'm not sure if you could hear that. But, um, so Akamaru comes back with the kid still on his back, unconscious. He's starting to wake up. Good job, Akamaru. You know, he starts petting his ear, you know, how people do with their dogs. My, I do that to my dog. Outside, drying, because he just showered. And then all my turn around saying, Good job, young man. The way you use your ability to fight to com and confuse the enemy as you saved the other, the other boy was very impressive. And your mother, she wouldn't happen to be the number three hero, would she? I can't think of a name for her, so if you can help me. Figure out a name for her. Please. Tell me. And so he nods and All Might laughs as the other heroes collect the villain. So Deku jumps on Akamaru riding him. Kind of like how Kiba does from time to time. And then while the two are running. Deku's like oh no I forgot to ask All Might for an autograph. So he hops off. And and you know on his way. He hops off when he's close to home. Um, wanting to go back, but he realizes that All Might wouldn't be there. But before he can, the blonde-haired boy came around the corner. I don't know who you are, but I'm not thanking you. I could have gotten out of there on my own. Deku, you know, turned. Deku looked at him. You were unconscious. If it wasn't for me, you would have died. And then Akamaru goes, Orf! Or woof! With a deep bark, I don't know. And then uh, the blonde haired kid scoffs and walks away, pissed. All Might comes around the corner a few seconds later. That was very impressive, young man. You showed the heart of a true hero. Not only that, you came up with a plan in seconds to save the boy. You're also very strong with your mom being the number one hero. So, I wish to pass my quirk onto you. Deku looks up, and Akamaru makes a little whine, turning his head to the side. And then Deku's like, pass your quirk on to me? All Might says, yes. My quirk is called one for all. I can pass it on to someone I want, and I want that person to be you. Deku's face lit up because All Might just told him that he wants him to have his quirk. And, um, so... Um, basically, Deku's, like, so excited, and then he's like, I accept. Akamaru barks again, and then All Might says, You are stronger, but I want you to gain more strength to handle the power of one for all. 
Now meet me at Dagobah Beach on Saturday. Deku nods and him and Akamaru walk home. That Saturday, him and Akamaru walk to Dagobah Beach. Ah, young Izuku, you made it. I want you to clean this beach. It used to be beautiful once, but the ocean's current brings all trash from around the world here. So I want to make it beautiful again, so clean it. Also, Akamaru, come sit here with me while he cleans. And he starts patting the sand neck, patting the bench next to him. What? I can't have Akamaru help me? All Might laughs as he pets Akamaru. Um, I don't know how he knows his name. I'm just gonna just forget it. Doesn't matter. Um, well, he's not getting the quirk, right? You are. So clean. Deku gets annoyed and cleans it in 10 months with a day to spare. And uh, All Might and Akamaru getting close, real close, and becoming best friends. With Akamaru, with All Might always throwing a ball for Akamaru. Not, not with one for all, just normally. So, it was a day before the entrance exam, entrance exam, and then he's like, Well, you've earned this, young man. And he plucks a piece of his hair and hands it to Deku. Eat this. Deku just eats it, no questioning. He's like, well, I'm surprised you didn't question it. Well, the quirk takes a few hours to, to go through your system. Now, see you soon, Inazuka. He jumps off, leaving Deku and Akamaru. Deku hops on Akamaru's back while they run into the woods. Arf! Arf! I, I did the high-pitched one, I don't know. Um, why? So, um, and then Deku says, yeah, I smell it too. And then they run through the woods until they find what they smell. I knew I smelled you, Koda. The birds Koda was flying with, f was with, fly away. Koda used sign language saying, you made the birds, birds fly away. But hey, Zuku. He pets Akamaru and the three hang out. Akamaru, ready to try again? Akamaru barks. And then he, he's like, okay, dynamic marking. Akamaru jumps up and spins, peeing on the targets of, on that uh, deck we made on the trees. Great aim, Akamaru. He lands. Arf. Oh, I forgot to mention this. It's going to be Chakra. His ability here is going to be Chakra. Because there's no way a quirk can make him and his dog, you know, turn into each other and do all that stuff. So it's Chakra. So he can run on the walls. He can run on water, stuff like that. And then, um, so, Koda claps, and then Deku looks at the time. Sorry, Koda, I gotta go. He hops on Akamaru, and and they run home. So, um, it takes him a while to get there, but it's later in the day, and he ends up running into a girl with weird ears. Hey, you should watch where you're going. Deku rubs the back of his head and says, Oh, sorry, Akamaru, you need to watch where you're going, you know? Akamaru whines and licks the girl's face to say sorry. He says sorry. He helps her up and then says, again, I'm sorry. Right, Akamaru? Or she, she says, yeah, it's okay. That's a good boy. She says, petting his ear because who wouldn't pet Akamaru? It's adorable. <clears throat> so um, she then says, this is a big dog since you can ride him. Reminds me of that hero with two dogs. Deku Rosa says, saying... Oh yeah, my mom is pretty popular because of her dogs mostly. They're good fighters though. Always beat us. Real scary. Huh, Akamaru? He goes, Arf! You know? He barks again. So she says, Wait, did you say mom? Deku nods and says, Yeah, my mom can be tough on me in training. Akamaru whines and then and then the he picks up he not picks us up. He pets Akamaru. And then says, well, good to meet you. Nice to meet you. She, She's like, hey, are you going to be a hero like your mom? Deku nods and Akamaru barks. Then she says, oh, so you must be applying to UA then, I assume. Deku says, oh, yeah, I am. Um, the entrance exam is tomorrow and I want to make sure I'm ready. So I'm going to go sleep, you know, take a nap, get some sleep. Um, And then... She's like, okay, then, well, I guess I'll see you there. And then um, he's like, oh, okay, so you're planning to be a hero, too? She nods. 
And then before they leave, Akamaru licks her face again for petting her. And they leave. So they jump on the roofs, going from roof to roof. Basically how, you know, they do in the trees and stuff. She watches them leave and wonders why he's so optimistic about everything. So she walks off heading home. Hey sis, we're home. She's feeding a puppy some milk. Hey Zuku, can you help me? Deku goes over and helps her. It must be difficult being the cheapest and the best vet in Japan. He helps her while Akamaru plays with some puppies. He, um, and after, once he's done helping her, he falls asleep get to be ready for tomorrow. So the next day, he wakes up and gets dressed, putting his jacket over his school clothes. Alright, I'm leaving. Later. He runs off with Akamaru. So when the two get to the school, uh, Deku getting caught off guard after he trips with Akamaru catching him. Oh, thanks Akamaru. They get to the school with Deku. Um, no. Um, so Akamaru is holding him by the sweater, pulling it up, him up, and then barks. And then a, a round-faced girl with a brunette says, Oh, wow, what a cute dog. He's smart, too. When he saw, when I saw you tripping, I was going to catch you, but he did it instead. Such a smart puppy. You know, doing that little voice that everybody does with dogs. Um, so um, she says that while petting him. Deku nods and then sees the girl that he bumped into from yesterday. And then, oh, hey, you're the one that Akamaru hit yesterday. He says, running over to her with Akamaru following. Um, Akamaru runs over and waiting for her to start petting him, but she doesn't notice it. She doesn't say pet start at first. Oh, good to see you again, being sarcastic. And then she starts petting Akamaru, making him happy. So they get anxiety to do the written exam when a tall blue haired boy stands up and points at Deku and Akamaru. Why is there a dog in here? Is this allowed? Deku looks up. Um, oh, I forgot to mention. He also found Koda and they sat next to each other. So he looks up at the boy with Koda trying to hold him back after they found each other, you know, and sat down next to each other. You have a problem with Akamaru? President Mike says, the dog is allowed to be here. He's the boy's partner and they work together. I read his file. And he needs his dog to go plus ultra. People look at Akamaru as Deku's pets him, thinking, um, thinking, could he? While well, people think, could he be related to the number three hero? I mean, she has dogs and she fights with them. People whisper, and the, and then the test begins. Three hours go by, when until it's time for the practical. Um. So Deku walks out with Akamaru. He sees the same. He sees he's in the same place, with that annoying blue-haired boy. Uh, who questioned Akamaru and the round face girl from before that he talked to for like a few seconds. And then the the boy says, I'm sorry for questioning your dog being here. I hope you can forgive me. Deku then says, yeah, it's fine. Forgiving him because forgiving him for um, since since, you know, he's like, oh, I'm sorry. And then he's like, the gates open and Deku and Akamaru run off. Man Beast Clone, all force technique, fang over fang. He he destroys a lot of robots in one attack, and and then he yells, "Good job, Akamaru!" The two run off, running up the walls and sides of buildings. Then the two split up to get more points. Tunneling fang, you know, and then the two regroup when they feel a rumbling. Akamaru, you feel that? Akamaru barks, and the two see people running. From a giant robot towering over a building. Then he smells something. He sniffs the air and looks near the foot of the robot. Akamaru, that girl, let's go. He makes the tiger hand sign saying, Man Beast Hybrid, Two-Headed Wolf. Him and Akamaru form together to make a giant white two-headed wolf. And then they jump up with yelling, Wolf Fang over Fang. The two spin at alarming speeds. Piercing the zero pointer, then come back around, hitting its head off to stop the zero pointer from falling onto the girl. He lands, then separating, and they, they he lands. They separate again, and they run to help her to take the rubble off. Thanks for the help, Akamaru. 
and they run, and then, um, you know, they run over and take the rubble off her. Time's up! They help pull her up, and she's like, am I seeing two of you, or are they're twins? Deku would laugh, and Nakamura would go back to normal. Wait, that was your dog? Deku laughs again, saying, yeah, that's Akamaru. I'm Izuku. She stands up saying, oh, I recognize you now. The kid that fell, but your dog caught you. He nods and Akamaru pulls his sweater. Okay, I gotta go. And the two run off, leaving, bumping into the girl again, f from before again. And this time, it's Deku that hits her instead of Akamaru. Ow, damn. Hey, what's up? The girl's rubbing her head and... Damn you, for the ch damn, for the child of a hero, you're such an idiot. Then Deku would feel a tap on his shoulder. Oh, hey, Koda. How'd you do? Koda would make, uh, use sign language, telling, talking to him, saying, I think I did good. You? Deku gives him a thumbs up, and the two walk away with Deku forgetting to tell her sorry. And this girl is Jiro. Hey, you didn't tell me sorry. She poked his back with her earphone jacks. Oh, okay, okay, I'm sorry, damn. You hungry? Me and Koda and Akamaru are gonna, going to get some McDonald's because uh, Akamaru's picky. Damn dog. Oh, wait. You're spoiled, Akamaru. Akamaru would whine, then bark. Uh, since he's mad that he still hasn't got food yet. And begins to push Deku and Koto and Jiro with his head. The four walk on, walk off to head to get some food. And that's end of part one of what if Deku was an Inazuka. You know, this is probably one of my favorite ones. I love dogs. Dogs are the best. And, um, you know, just I really hope you like this. Um, I'm going to be putting up what if Deku was a ghoul soon. Um, that one would be cool since, you know. Ghouls are in the world. That one's going to be pretty graphic in the explaining that I'm going to do. So, um, yeah, I really thank you guys for watching. You guys are the best. And see you later.